Good morning, everybody on YouTube. We are getting ready to go Facebook Live. So um, if that doesn't work out, then you guys will be able to see this later on and in the when weekend. You, when you see us being shifty-eyed, it's because we're looking back and forth yeah. with different cameras. We'll try to just move our eyes and not our head and <laughs> you know get a crick in our neck. All right, hold on. All right, let's see if this Facebook Live thing is going to work for us this, this Three, month. Two, I tried. It didn't work one. last time, did it? Yeah, we had some You're issues on. last time. Hey, good morning, Facebook people. We are on Facebook Live. We're getting ready to do our live training sessions. I'm Eric. I'm Dave. Vicky's behind the camera. She's the boss. Vicky's back there waving the queen. <laughs> uh, so we've got uh, some interesting stuff for you guys today. Um, hopefully this, uh, and this is just kind of preface, any of you that have watched before know preface. that... Preface. That's a good word. I like that. Use that more. Did on. you think I said breakfast? No, no. I, no hotcakes. I, I, I heard, I heard well, I'm, I'm lip reading. I can't hear you, but I read your lips. <laughs> no, I said preface, <laughs> not breakfast. Breakfast is over. Anyway. <laughs> Dang, that's a good word. So, um... Just a, a word of warning, if it turns out that this Facebook Live thing doesn't work and we're out in the middle of the desert, so our signal kind of goes goofy sometimes, if it doesn't work, after 15 or 20, 10, 15 minutes, the queen says she's going to shut it down and then you guys can just catch all up on YouTube, hopefully by the end of the weekend, if, if it all works out. Good morning, Mike Bradley, John Weaver, Mike. Benjamin, oh. Bunch more popping in. So. Oh, good, good. Just, just for your information, I, I know you're saying something, but I can't hear you because oh. I can't see your face. That's all right. I'll let you know well, if I, I have something you. for you to see. <laughs> if, but if you're standing where I can see you, then I know what you're saying. All right. She was just saying that there's a bunch of people now chiming in. They're tuning in. They're watching. Oh, good. Is that what yeah. you were saying? That's what I said. Well, now no. I know. <laughs> a whole bunch of people. Okay. So it's hell getting old. I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with uh, some uh, kind of an add-on to the video that we did the other day where I made uh, this little template, this little fast layout template. I don't know if it's showing up there or not, but uh, anyway, this is uh, for stock signs. This is made out of hardboard, and I got a lot of questions on this, and there's some stuff that I want to kind of touch on first. Then we're gonna get into Dad's demo. Um, a couple different things. First of all, this is hardboard. This is like the uh, maybe Masonite. A, Masonite, yeah. Eighth inch. Um, this is probably the second, only the second time I've ever cut it. So the things that I didn't talk about the other day that I want to mention is this stuff probably is toxic with, if you breathe it when you're cutting it. So wear a mask. It's always a good idea. Always wear eye protection. Um, is always a good idea when you're cutting anything with a router. So um, uh, the truth is I've cut, <coughs> I've cut thousands of pieces of that on the saw and there's sawdust. I've never had any problem with any of it, uh, but it, if you're going to breathe the dust in from like from using a router, uh, I'd use a little respirator uh, yeah. or have a fan blowing across it, one or the other. Just uh, it's probably best if you don't breathe that stuff in. You know, and if you've got dust collection set up on your router, then and you've got a you know hose or dust collector, you'll probably be fine. But it's always good to be safe. Wear a mask. Uh, when you're working with that stuff. Um, the other thing and if is... You, if you're wearing a mask and you have to arrange that some way and people ask you why you're wearing a mask, tell them you're the Lone Ranger. I knew that was coming. Yeah. I've heard that once or twice. That, good job, Dad. I knew you'd figure out a way to We've get that We've got a lot in. of people come in from Texas. I hope you guys are staying safe down there. Yeah. Or over there. A lot of flooding going on down there. So uh, we're, our thoughts and prayers are with you guys down in South Texas. Um, okay, so some questions that I got based on this. The PVC that I talked about, that I showed a little template made out of PVC. They sell PVC in uh, four by eight sheets. So um, any plastics company will have that. It works well, but honestly the hardboard works, for me, works just as well. A lot of, a lot a lot of people think PVC is just like water pipe, but the truth is, uh, there's about 10,000 products are made out of polyvinyl chloride, which is PVC. But you can buy it in flat sheets in different thicknesses. And it's, uh, it's pretty good for making stuff like patterns and templates. Um, and then uh, people are asking about thin plywood. Absolutely, you can use thin plywood. Any kind of thin material that you can spray that black on, um, yeah, you Morgan can use. Yeah, Morgan from Sweden. Morgan Stoltz. Morgan Stoltz. Hey, Morgan. Hey, Morgan. Um, 
and then uh, acrylic you can absolutely use acrylic too um, the thing that you want to remember though is um, you want you want it as thin as you can get that you can work with don't go with quarter inch because if this was quarter inch then I'd have to be right over the top of it when I'm spraying it in order to get a sharp line if you're at any kind of an angle eighth inch is always better so use uh, use thin stuff eighth inch yeah um, you can buy uh, if you buy cast acrylic clear cast acrylic at like Home Depot uh, it yeah, actually is thinner than eighth of inch about 118 thousand so and some of it is uh, you can get it 96 thousand so and, okay. and it's good stuff we're gonna I'm gonna do a couple of hellos we got uh, Jonathan Clark Dennis from Louisiana John Wheeler Mike Bradley Purefers wow. oh. I know who you're talking okay. about okay uh, Robert, hi Robert from Pennsylvania. Um, sorry, I can't read and be over she, there at the same she's time. She's just Look saying to people. I know. Uh, I'm Connie from out. Louisiana. David from Washington. Wow. John Moore. We got Texas, 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 Sweden, North Carolina. Seth wow. in California. Matt in Oklahoma City. Sandy in Woodland Park. Goodness sakes. Uh, Connie asked, would you use a router to cut the PVC sh sheet? I uh, I would cut the PV sheet, PVC sheet. sheets on a saw. Hi, Mary. I, I would definitely cut that with your saw, just like any piece of wood. Yeah, we have a panel <clears> saw, <throat> but you can you can use you can use a, a handheld a circular saw, a skill saw. Uh, we have a panel saw for cutting it, but you can use a table saw. Yeah. Uh, just use a carbide blade if you got it. It's better than a steel blade. The steel blade has a tendency to to chip it a little bit with a good carbide blade makes a nice smooth clean cut. We got Ian Cook from Northern Ireland. Mary Ian, and Steve, wow. Deborah, Ocean. Uh, That's so cool. Northern Ireland. I'm gonna go there fishing someday. Yeah. And John Moore says I'm on vacation in California but just had to take the time to watch the north. <laughs> Thank you John. Texas, uh, Southern Indiana, Minnesota. Wow. Oh hi John. Jeff from Minnesota. Uh, Okay, Jeff so Lambert, Idaho, Minnesota. yeah, they're yeah. Canada. Hey, Jason, hi, Jason. I'm glad that I'm glad the signal's holding up so far. Let's keep our, <laughs> our fingers crossed. That's great. Okay. That's incredible. We get people from you know, Ireland, from, yeah, from just Canada. everywhere, Sweden, uh, just yeah. tuning in to a couple of country boys out in the desert. That's amazing. Yeah, it's all due to Vicky. It's all, That's all Vicky's fault. Yeah. Or, yeah. To her credit. To her credit. <laughs> okay, so here's the here's another thing that I wanted to touch on. Remember, when you're cutting all the way through this, guys, like I did this the other day, and that was, I think it was Wednesday's video. Remember, you're cutting all the way through, but you want to just barely cut through this stuff because the last thing you want is that router bit to catch this rubber mat or whatever you're underneath. Um, and I've had that happen before, so be really careful. Don't go through this thing so far that you're going to catch that rubber mat. Um, it, will, uh, it will wake you up in a hurry. Trust me, when that rubber mat wraps around that rubber I like mat. to use a sacrifice like a piece of plywood or, or even uh, MDF. Yeah. A sacrifice, something that will cut, but it won't grab the router bit. Yeah, and the, the, the trick with that is that if you've got a piece of wood to try and keep this stuff, but you could put some adhesive on here and stick it down, and then if you had it on sitting on wood, then you would be cutting wood and you wouldn't have the issue of this rubber mat. Uh, possibly you get that two-sided carpet tape and just use little pieces of it and then it'll hold that down where you want to yeah. cut it. All right, so here's the end. The last thing I want to talk, touch on is when you're cutting this, uh, you know what, let me put this. Uh, real quick, Connie asked if you're using the router to cut that, right? Yes, yes. Go back and watch Wednesday's video, last Wednesday's hold video. Hold that back. Hold this up. Yeah, there so you go. here's the thing that you want to be careful of too is when, you, when you're cutting this with a router, remember you're cutting all the way through, you'll have spots like this and maybe like this that are, or, or these that are going to tend to be weak. So the way I would cut this is I would start at the top, come down and do that part and I would not come back up this way because this will be weak. I, then I would take the router out, start here and come and bring this line down to this. Consequently, I would do this the same way, and I think I did. Bring this here, do one leg this way. If I come up this way, then this is gonna could possibly chatter and be weak. So I'll do this in two pieces. I'll, I'll cut here, end up here, 
and then I'll start here and come down and meet it so I'm not putting any uh, undue pressure on that. So I'm what, gonna, uh, what router bit are you using? I use the profile bit. Okay, yeah. that, that's yeah. going to be very important. Everybody's going to want to know what router bit yeah. you use. I, if you go back and watch Wednesday's video, I use the, uh, the profile bit. Although you could use a straight eighth inch bit, but I don't use those. I use a profile yeah, bit. Yeah, we don't use, we, we have an eight, I have two or three eighth inch bits, uh, but they're special and you have to have a special call up for the router and yeah. uh, they're special bits you have to special order. We don't have them. So uh, the profile bit is what you want to use. Yeah. Uh, Ian Cook, he's in Ireland, He's because you said you want to go fish in there someday. He said, great salmon rivers in Ireland. And he says, come on, Connor McGregor. Connor <laughs> oh, McGregor that, tonight. That's yeah. a, there's a big fight big on fight tonight. tonight. Connor yeah. McGregor, uh, 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 Irish. Fighting, uh, weather, he's uh, my, uh, Merriweather. Uh, Mayweather. 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 It's a big fight. Oh. UFC guy against a boxer, and they've been touting it. They're um, both going to yeah. make tons of money from it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to watch Bo it. Bo Trower says, good morning, Godfathers of Sign Carving. <laughs> Godfathers of Sign Carving. Gene, sa anyway. Gene Goss says, good man, Aaron. Give all credit to Vicky and Smart also. <laughs> okay, so we're doing right, so, so far. Knock on wood. This is yeah, we're good so far. So if you want to, uh, and I've got two other things, then we're going to get into the demo. If you want to search any particular uh, subject on our channel, remember the channel search thing. And that's, that's go to Old Dave 100 on YouTube, not on Make a Wood Sign, but on YouTube, go to Old Dave 100. That's O L. That's O L D A V E. One zero zero, and most of you already know this. And then when you get there, you'll see this little hourglass thing. If you click on that, a box comes up, and you can type in. Well, you could type in hashtag one thirty, and that will bring up that particular video. Or you can type in a, a subject. Uh, for instance, uh, outset letters, inset letters, uh, doing edges, Scallop, backgrounds. Scalloping. Yeah, any number oh. of different things. You can just put the subject in there and it'll search just our channel and not all of YouTube. So if you guys are looking for a... Sp or you, uh, The other thing is you can always email me, um, eric at makeawoodsign.com, email me and then I'll find it and send you a link to it or send you what video that you need to watch. And the other thing is our, our website, remember, is makeawoodsign.com. It's and there's no videos on here to speak of. All the videos really are on YouTube. Well, yeah. the, you can get the links on that. You can just click on the link and go to our. Well, you can go to our channel exactly. on the link, but the the individual videos aren't posted there. Right, right. They're all over on that. Um, and and remember again, I know you guys are watching through Facebook. If you guys want to leave me a message, please do not leave me a message. Through Facebook, it's getting really, really complicated Watching. for me to see all the different places uh, on Facebook to get messages. So please leave me an email on Eric at makeawoodsign.com. The link will be down below. But most of you already know that. All right, that's it for me. That I've I've gone. Now we're going into Dad's demo, which is pretty much going to be the whole thing today. Yeah, I've um, got I've got a lot of requests. I've I've made a video on this once before, but it was kind of a kind of a crude fast one and it's on sharpening router bits. Um, carbide router bits, just because they're carbide, they're a little difficult to sharpen. They're not, it's not hard to do, but it does take a little practice to get good at it. And we have premium members that send, send us their router bits to be sharpened. Uh, and we touch them up and we do it by hand. We don't, we don't have machine sharpening. I, we do it by hand. And so I'm going to make uh, I'm going to make a little demonstration here to show you a little bit about how I do it. I'm going to describe some of the characteristics of the router bits, give you some idea of, uh, of what we're talking about when we're talking about flutes or we're talking about clearance or we're talking about whatever we're talking about on sharpening router bits. And so I'm going to do a little demonstration and show you how I sharpen the router bits. How I taught Eric to sharpen the router bits 40 years ago, and it's just uh, it's just a little another little. It should be a little bit better than the than the first uh, the first video I made. I'll try to make it a little a little clearer so you get a better idea of it. So okay, okay. So I'll get this set up for you. Bear with us, guys. 
scene change. Yeah, scene change. I'll get around here in front of you just, just slightly. Well, this is Morgan's first time watching. Well, I don't. I, it's says, a different uh, what time What better zone. way to spend a Saturday than watching you guys? Great to be here for the first time. <laughs> but I don't think it's nine o'clock in the morning in big Sweden. Big hello to Queen. Hi, Morgan. Am I standing in front yep, of this? Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna I'm move gonna everything move. around as if by magic. Okay, to begin with. Hold on, give me a second to set up here. Okay. Give you a second to shut up? No. Oh, to shut up. No, that's oh, I, you to shut okay. up. Okay. <laughs> All right, is that board in the right spot for you? Yeah, that's good enough. I can I can work with that. All right. There's your pen. There's your eraser. Okay. All right. Now you tell me when we're ready to go, boss. All right, go. Roll. Do okay. it. Okay. To begin with, whenever you're doing grinding, like on a on router bits, I don't always wear glasses when I'm routing signs, but I do wear glasses anytime I'm working with metal, and. Uh, so I just, uh, these are just cheap safety glasses or, you know, there's no lens, uh, uh, prescription lenses are just cheap safety glasses that you can get at any supply store. And I'll get out some of these router bits here and show you, show you what we're doing. This first one is a profile bit. You can probably see that. Yeah. Now the first thing that you want to do on your router bits, very, very important. Uh, now these, actually, these router bits don't just don't show much wear at all. But generally, when router, when you have router bits like this, can you see all right, babe? When you have router bits like this, before you sharpen them. Now, why doesn't this Dremel go turn oh, on? Oh, because that's not the switch. This is the switch. Oh. Good. So the first thing you want to do, and main thing you want to do on all your router bits, is keep them clean. And it's not difficult to do. This is just this is just a little wire, a brass wire brush, and you turn that. I'm not going to turn that back on. And you just all you do because it's, it's soft brass. All it's going to do is it's just going to clean your router bits. So take all of your router bits and just. Turn this brush on and turn the router bit in your fingers like this and make sure that all of the residue, the resin that builds up on these, make sure they're clean. It's very important to keep it. They'll last three times, four times longer if you keep them clean. Well, and they cut better too. And they cut better. Yeah, they, they really do. They cut better. Now, one way you can tell if a router bit is nice and sharp and has a good sharp edge. Can you see this? Yeah, just you quit bopping it around and we'll see it good. Okay, if you take that router bit and put it on your thumbnail and drag it across your thumbnail, if it catches that if you can feel, feel it rough, that means it's got a good sharp edge on it. If it's smooth, if it just comes across like it's just, like if you did this, if it comes across like that, that means it needs grinding. I mean, it doesn't have a good sharp edge on it. If you had a comparator, which is a huge magnifying glass that they use in, in precision machining, you could look at it and see that actually you can't see it with the naked eye, but that edge is kind of rounded over. And that's why when you drag it across your thumbnail or fingernail, uh, it doesn't drag, it doesn't kind of, kind of catch and hook. So you can always tell if your router bit is sharp just by grinding it across your thumbnail. That's a good way to do it. Okay. Now, when I get ready to sharpen this, I want to show you something. We'll go over to this whiteboard. Now, this is a grinding wheel, okay? This is the dead center of the grinding wheel. That's not perfect. So when you're sharpening your bit, say you, you've got your, your router bit out here and you're uh, let's say this is a this is a router bit. This is a flute. This is a part that actually does the cutting right here, and that's a flute. When you get that up here, you want to make sure that the flute. And I'll show you on the grinding wheel. You want to make sure that the flute is exactly on the center, or ten or fifteen thousands above the center. The reason for that 
is when you're sharpening that flute, you've got to have a little clearance. Say this is a flute. And so if you have this right at the center, that means when you push it in, this down here, because of the way you're sharpening it, you'll, you'll get some clearance on there. You, and, and it should be around five degrees. You can't measure it, but somewhere around five degrees clearance on that, on that cutter. Uh, and by getting it right on center and moving this in there, this part right down here. Yeah, no, we're good. Something was flying thought, in my face. I, oh, no. It, no, I was just. I, I, <laughs> thought, I thought you were trying to get no, my. No, I got a bug. She was brushing face. flies away. <laughs> so, no, so clearance. Not. Just to just to uh, be be uh, 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 a definition. Clearance is basically uh, behind the edge or behind the flute. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. The amount. Where the I'm going to show you this cutter. This is a this is a 60 degree cutter. Now this particular cutter. This is a cutter, and this particular cutter. If you can look at it, can you see this all right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold it right there. Hold on. Let me get over there. I'm going to turn it slightly. Yeah. It has three flutes on it. Right. Now most cutters only have two flutes, but this one has three flutes. All of the other cutters that we that we make and sell only have two flutes. This particular cutter, the 60 degree cutter. Except for the SC50. The SC50 has a single flute, yeah. Okay, so when we're looking at this, I'm not going to turn this on right now, but now can you see what yeah, I'm doing here? Uh-huh. Okay, let's assume that the that the that this uh, wheel is turning and when I bring this in and I put this right on there I want to be right dead center now if I had a if I had a laser beam over here I would use a laser beam I'll get this stretched out just a little bit more now can you can you we're see good. yeah you we're see right with you dad we're okay. right there now what I would do if this if the wheel were running this is a quarter inch here. This is slightly over a quarter inch. So I would keep this right dead center and I would just move it very, very gently. I mean very gently. And once I got it a new a new flute cut on there, that is a new surface on the on the cutting edge, then what I would do is I would just roll this very slightly. Not enough to where you come around and catch that other flute. But once you get that, that new edge on there. If you roll it just slightly, then you put the clearance back here so that when when it comes in, say it, it, if it were then cutting on the wood, it would come in so that the, the cutting edge would cut the wood, but the clearance would be back behind so that when you when you run that across the wheel and then you just move it slightly, you're putting the clearance on there, which should be around five degrees, five six degrees, the same as uh, the clearance on a on a drill bit, where you're grinding a drill bit to drill into wood. About four or five degrees is all you need in order for the tool to cut the wood and for the chip to get out of the way, so that the, the next one can do it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set up. Yeah. 
not to try not to push real hard. So what you saw me do there would be exactly the same. And that was just on the on the 60 degree. Now if I were doing the profile bit, the same thing. You've got 15 degrees on the side. This is two flute. Then you got 45 degrees on the tip. So what I what I would do is I would set up and put this 45 degree on there and I just barely touch that and tip it. And I would barely touch that and turn it and then I would go back put this on there and just just once I get it on center then I would drag it across there very carefully and that's really all you need to do if, if the wheel had been turning this would be a sharp bit and that's all it takes to sharpen a bit now since it's not been sharpened I can just drag that across and it just doesn't catch at all whereas this one I just sharpened that just kind of digs into my thumbnail and it'll actually pull up a little a little bit of my thumbnail so that's the uh, that's the main thing you need to remember on on sharpening bits now would you hand me that 45 degree bit with a bearing over there <clears throat> now this is another bit that we can sharpen but <clears throat> in order to sharpen this one the bearing has to be removed it's a little allen screw take that screw out take this off and then you can do the same thing all you do is just set it up and get it you know get it on center or slightly above and just drag that thing across and that's literally all it would take right there you get it set up and I use my finger kind of a just to steady my hand you could use a some sort of a tool rest but I, I don't do that I never have I think my son might but all you do is you get that set up where you want it, just touch it on the wheel, and drag it across, and then you get a brand new cutting fluid on there. So that's really now, all the... I'm going to ask a question. Sure, Matt. go ahead, son. You know, most bench grinders, uh, you can see these two holes down here. Most bench grinders come with a little rest on there. You know, they're bolted on. We took ours off years yeah. ago, but they come. When those things are in full up position, do those basically put... When your hands on there, do those put those necessarily put these in the right position of being in the center of that wheel? Or no, they there? put those in the right position for dressing your wheel. Oh, okay. Uh, if you have a wheel dresser, of course, on a diamond you don't need a wheel dresser because, uh, as a, as an example, if you get a close up on this wheel and you see how much it's worn, that's how much it's worn over a period of twenty years. It's, yeah, that diamond wheel wheels, is 20 years. Diamond total. wheels, the way we sharpen carbide bits, they'll they'll probably, they'll outlast me. I've got one that's a half inch wide. Uh, this is a quarter inch wide. I've got one that's a half inch wide that I know is 30, 35 years old. And it doesn't show any wear at all. I mean, the, the amount of wear on it is absolute negligible. You could measure it in, in millis, uh, uh, you know, in, in thousands, thousands of an inch you might get a couple of thousands but the thing about diamond wheels is they just don't wear out the way we use them they would if you were using them in high production grinding but the way we use them uh, they'll just last forever so now, when you say that, dressing that, a wheel then this is a conventional wheel and and if you're grinding something in the center of that wheel and it kind of gets a because it's kind of stone I, I yeah, you can see, you see how this is, already see how that's smooth. I dressed, I dressed this about two weeks ago. Okay. This did have some deep grooves because this is a fairly soft wheel. Yeah. This has some deep grooves in it, and I dressed that. I didn't put this. Okay. What do you mean by you dressed it? Dressing okay. it means like you're reshaping it. Okay. Yeah. If I if I wanted, for instance, if I wanted this to be round, I could take a wheel dresser, and actually make this whole this whole thing round. You don't do that on diamond. You can 
get a diamond wheel dresser if you have a diamond wheel that gets worn but uh, if you buy one of these diamond wheels the chances of you ever wearing it out or having to dress it is just non-existent. I, like I say I've got one that's 35 or 40 years old and it still shows nowhere at all. Okay. Now okay, yeah. on this tool thing that you ask about yeah. If that, if that is set up right, it'll be right dead center. Okay. So those things being adjustable, if you set it up where it's exactly right and you've got it exactly on center and then you drop it down 10 or 15 or 20 thousandths, then you can go in and put the rest of your tool on it knowing that you're right at the center or yeah. 10 or 15 thousands above the center so that you're getting the right grind on there so okay if it, uh, it can be adjusted if, it, yeah if it's if if you've got the cover on it here and if you've got that the tool rest if you've got it there uh, and you want to use it just you know to make sure your hands don't move that much uh, go ahead and use it you just have to get used to it I've been doing this for so many years that I could probably do it in in semi darkness but uh, that's just because I've been doing it for so long. Okay, but it, we've got time for a question and answer since we've got okay, a now Just remember, this is really easy to do, and I know I make it look like it's just absolutely mm -hmm. simple, but it does take a little practice to get good at it. I had somebody call the other day, Birch, I think, and said he's got like 30 or 40 bits that he's used flat hones on and all kinds of stuff to try to get his bits sharpened. And this is really all you need to do now. This this kind of a of a diamond wheel costs around 140 bucks, but for what it'll do, uh, and for as long as it'll last, it's just absolutely dirt cheap. Especially at the price of carbide bits, you're paying 20 bucks a piece for these carbide bits. And the fact is that you can get uh, 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 sharpenings if you do it right. Uh, 125 or 130 dollars for a diamond wheel is dirt cheap so okay now if you got some questions let's uh well we're going to get back we're yes. going to move this oh, around we're move everything well i'm <coughs> i'm going to set this uh i'm going to this one that i've sharpened i'm going to mark it and the rest of them are going back in the tubes they'll be sharpened later on yeah that was actually, those are bits from uh, one of our premium members. Yeah, one of our premium members. Yeah. Greg, those bits. are your bits. Greg, Greg Warren. Greg yeah. Warren. Yeah. Those are your router bits. Oh, yeah, right? they're, they're yours, Greg. And, and the thing is, too. Yeah, one of them is good. Well, we'll you know, uh, the thing we do, too, also, guys, when we sharpen them, whether it's for premium members or not, we always, I always put them in the router and test them and yeah, actually absolutely. cut wood with them. Absolutely. That's what I always do. And I do them, when I sharpen them, uh, I sharpen them and test them. I sharpen a bit and then I test it. Yeah. Then it's done. And then I take another bit, I sharpen it and I test it. So each of the bits that we grind for our premium members or non-premium members, because we'll grind them for non-premium members as well, except we charge we charge seven dollars each for regrinding them, uh, right. except for premium members. They get them ground free. They still have to pay the shipping, but uh, well, like Greg just sent in six, six bits, six yes. or eight bits. I say six bits is seven bucks a piece. That's forty-two dollars, and that's free sharpening. Yeah. And all it costs is like nine ninety-five a month for a premium membership. Plus, you get all kind of other perks for a premium good, membership. And good I'm not, commercial for the yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to <laughs> sell premium memberships. I'm just saying that if uh, if you're you know if you're doing sign carving, uh, and you're going you're gonna to have the money invested in the router bits. Uh, it's it, a great deal for somebody that uses the router bits. Absolutely. If they don't use them, then it's, it yeah, doesn't it's make sense at all. All right, now, boys, we've got questions. Now, if you if you want to go ahead and buy a, pay 125 bucks, get a bench grinder, get a wheel, yeah. and, and learn how to do it yourself, you save that little absolutely. bit. But for premium members, uh, you can't beat that free sharpening. Okay. All right. Matt well, Wilson says, do you still like the DeWalt better than the Rigid? I'm about to buy a palm router. Yes, I do. Uh, however, the what? Rigid. The, rigid. the Rigid. Oh, the Rigid. I like the Rigid. I really do. I, I started with the uh, DeWalt. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm patting myself on the back. Nobody, I never saw anybody carving with palm routers until I tried it out of the blue. 
Um, and the DeWalt was the first one that I tried. I love the DeWalt. It's still my favorite. But for the money, honestly, the Rigid well, is he, a great little router. He whined when he first started because he didn't have handles on it. He wanted me to put handles on it. So he was a little whiny. But he was still doing good work. He does work. that whiny a lot. Oh, yeah, he was geez. still doing good work with it. That's what I designed the It was the my for. idea to put the handles on All right. it, but I just glued them on and they All fell right, off. All right, boys, here we go. <laughs> All right. Would you, would an upcut spiral bit save you having to route from the other side? That's on the template that you made. In, in, in a certain circumstances, yes, but the upcut router bit that we use is quarter inch. So if you had uh, big templates like three inch letters, four inch letters, where you didn't have any tight spots like that little one that I just showed, that there's no way that you could use our upcut because it cuts a quarter of an inch wide. There's no way that you could use that for that little template. It would just, the, you can't get in those tight spots. Unless you use an upcut eighth inch. Unless well, you, then you got to buy a special bit. Yeah, if you have a small upcut eighth inch or sixteenth inch or whatever, you might get by with it. But our profile yeah. bit is really an upcut bit, even though it's a straight flute. Uh, it does pull the sawdust up out of it, so it's really an upcut bit. Yeah. Okay, Clark asked he, when you were talking about cleaning the router bits. He says you've been. Uh, I've been using mineral spirits to clean them with. Yeah. Uh, is that something you, you uh, something you use too? You know, well, I, if you if you just if you want to soak them, yeah, I just use your mineral spirits and just put them in and soak them. But it still won't clean the residue off. It won't clean the the resin. It'll soften it. But you need that little, uh, if not a Dremel, uh, just get a big, you know, a big brass wheel for your bench grinder. But you need to use a brass wheel to clean those router bits off. You need to get all of that residue off. Keep them absolutely clean. They'll last three times as long and they'll cut better. Uh, you just save a lot of money in the long run if you keep those bits clean. Okay. However you clean them. Brad, uh, Rob asked which direction is the grinder going. Uh, Danny said it always goes late. Or somebody said the, it always goes down. Wheel? Yeah. yeah, the grinding wheel always turns clockwise. Yeah, clockwise. If, you, if, you look, if you look at it from the end and turn your chair around, Turn it yeah, clockwise. Going clockwise. Right. Yeah. Unless unless you reverse the motor and if you do that, then you gotta stand on your head to sharpen the bits. Jerry <laughs> Ivy asked what kind of wheel? Is it a diamond wheel? Yes. That's a uh -huh. diamond wheel. And we have uh, some information on that too. Dad yeah, we've got some info. I'm just gonna read this real quick. Uh, the original wheel that I bought thirty some years ago, I bought it from US Diamond. That and you can go on and do a search for US Diamond. And I believe the part number is X2152. Now that's the half inch wheel that I bought years ago. The eighth inch wheel that I just you just saw me use. Quarter inch wheel. Or the quarter inch wheel, I mean not the eighth inch. Uh, the quarter inch wheel that I had just used is a standard diamond and US diamond. And we believe they're the same company now. And it looks like the number is R one hundred B as in boy quarter inch. Uh, don't know that for sure. Now, would you? I'm, I'm curious because back when we bought them, they didn't have fine or, or uh, you know. Uh, yeah, they didn't. Thing. They didn't mention grits. Uh, and but this is a fine grit wheel. This, the this is a using. fine grit. And and if they ask grit, go for a hundred and eighty, two hundred and twenty. You can get them a hundred and forty, a hundred and fifty. But go for 180 grit, uh, which I believe is, is pretty fine for a diamond. So go with 180 grit uh, if somebody asks you the grit that you want. Now let me give you a number. Get your pencil handy. This is an 800 number for the company that we bought these from. I'm fairly sure it's still a good number, but I can't guarantee it. It's an 800 number, so it's 1-800-888. Four one four eight, and uh, tell them that you want it when you talk to them on the phone. If you want it for sharpening carbide router bits, uh, do you recommend a quarter inch or half inch wheel? Oh, I like yeah. half inch. I like quarter inch. The one that that I was using. Now, if you noticed on that sixty degree, the flute on that, the cutting edge, the flute was a little bit wider than a quarter inch. Yeah. So I had to move it slightly. Now, if you have a half inch wheel. They cost a little bit more, 
but you you don't have to move your router bit so far to get to get a full a full cutting edge on there. I like half inch. Eric likes his quarter inch. So uh, if you if you go with my recommendation, you get a half inch. Okay, Diane Hoer. So hey, says, Diane. Uh, good evening, friends. Brent's, Brad sends his regards, um, praying that everything's good over there For in his Australia. Dad, yeah. 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 Um. Greg Worrell says, "Up oh, there, you go. He's whining." <laughs> Uh, Let's move on. Okay. Um, <laughs> Bra uh, Bo, Bo Trower says, Bo Trower. is 12% moisture okay to carve? I know that 6% is better or is ideal, but the air d is damp around here. 12% uh, uh, for me is still hot. a little much. Yeah. I, 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 you can carve it. Absolutely, you can carve it. But uh, what's going to happen is down in the groove, you're going to get a bunch of sawdust. Or it, I guess it would depend on the kind of wood. But the woods that I've used, re a redwood and especially the cedar, if it's 12%, I know it's going to pack down in that groove and it's going to be a, a, a pain to get all that sawdust out. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to throw up, if you're doing outside letters in the background, it'll throw up little burrs and... Um, uh, little slivers and stuff in there that just want to hang on. They don't want to let go. It doesn't make a real clean cut, so it becomes kind of a pain. So if I you have to build some sort of a, of a frame, just a uh, just a frame. Throw some plastic over it. Put your board underneath there, and just put a little incandescent lamp under there. Some something to just generate a little bit of heat. Just let them sit for a week or so. They'll drop from twelve percent down to. Down to five or six percent, just within a week or, or so. Or an old refrigerator, gutted refrigerator, freezer, like I've talked about. I bought an old one and gutted it out, put an incandescent light, and it's a nice little heat box. Yeah, That's you're good. you're limited there. You're limited to the size of the box. Yeah. Where if you make a frame, just a two before frame, put everything underneath it, put the frame above it, and then throw plastic over it. Uh, there's no limit. You can be eight eight foot long easily. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, that just but but. 12%, yeah, you can carve it. Uh, you're going to have some You make issues. better signs if you if you get it down to somewhere around 6% okay. or less. Connie, I know, I'm not going to try to pronounce the last names because it's okay. just, I'll butcher them. Just go by Connie the way. Connie says, when making a sign to give away to start your business, what type of wood would you use? Would you use cedar or pine? I would use whatever you have available to you. I mean, we're talking to people in, in Sweden and, you know, so that's, that's, that's based on where you're at geographically and what you have local to you. I have redwood and I have cedar and I have pine. If you're in the Philippines, you'd have mahogany. Yeah. Uh, if you're like in Louisiana, you'd have something from the swamp, like basswood. Basswood is excellent, but mahogany is not that great. But, that's, that's what but if you have pine and cedar both available to you, and uh, whichever one is, is less expensive and it makes a good sign, go with that. It'll save you a few bucks. Okay, Morgan Stoltz, I, talking about cleaning the router bits, he says he uses oven cleaner and it works great. You know, the ones I that remember foam. Morgan telling and it only that. takes a minute to clean all the bits. Yeah, yeah, so they're, you know, they're, uh, and I've well, heard that. If it's heavy residue and you want to use oven cleaner, that's fine. Yeah. But if you're not using, if you're not using a brass brush on those, you're not getting them clean. Uh, oven cleaner will take it down, but even when you use oven cleaner on an oven, you generally will go in and, Scrape and clean the residue after the oven cleaner dissolves it. So use that brass brush. They don't cost hardly anything, uh, and they'll, just, they'll save you so much money in the long run. Okay. Um, okay. Why do I need to use... Make Good this question, quick, though, Morgan. Make this a quick answer. It's a... One of those that you could get long because okay. I. Okay, why do I need to use sanding sealer and okay. how does it work? Okay, so here's the deal sanding sealer, again, my opinion. The reason I started using sanding sealer is because I was cutting boards, uh, I was cutting signs out of pine. Pine has a tendency to bleed the black spray, whether it's the ink or the primer that I use. It has a tendency to bleed into the grain of the board. Sanding sealer, I when I get my boards, I put sanding sealer on it, and that, but that's only on the pine. I don't put sanding sealer on the redwood. I don't put sanding sealer on cedar. Those are the three basic woods that I use. Only on pine because it has the the bleeding tendency. It has. It's a little more porous for some reason, and so when you spray it, 
for your layout, the black will tend, have a tendency to bleed into the grain of the wood and you can't sand it out once it's in there. But with sanding sealer, that seals that up so that it doesn't bleed into the board so it'll sand off. And with, with the exception is if you, pour, if you spray too heavy, even if with sanding sealer, it's still going to bleed on pine. So have a light touch. I, you know, I harp on that all the time. Have a light touch with that spray can. Uh, Ask him where he learned that. Yeah, yeah. I, he learned him, it, him. He learned it from, not whining. From, from suggestions that I gave him over a period of time. <laughs> Okay, I Christine Floyd says, Eric, do you also put your primer in the fridge to keep it cool? Yes. Yes, in, in the summertime. In the wintertime, I don't have to worry about it. In the summertime, it's 110, 115 degrees out here. Uh, I keep, I love it. I, I keep the, the, any of the black sprays, I keep them in the, um, the, either the ink or the primer in the All fridge. Right. Ron yes. Campbell says, thanks for the tip on keeping my bits free of pitch. The brass brush on my Dremel works great. Keep up the great work and thanks for all the inspiration. Well, thank you. Yeah, Danny, I appreciate you watching. Danny Jones says, why do you roll the profile bit on the first sharpening step rather than just run it down the diamond blade to begin with? Oh. On the profile bit, on the 15 degree part of it, since that's so thin, you don't necessarily need to roll it. You can just run that right straight down the wheel and it'll cut a brand new flute on there. On the 45 degree that's about there on the end, when you touch that, if you just roll it slightly, and I mean just a few thousands, you're sure that you've got clearance. And if you don't have clearance, what's going to happen is the tip of the bit will cut, but it'll it'll leave a burr down in the bottom. So if you roll it, that's all that's doing is just to be absolutely certain that you got clearance. That's a good question, though, because on the flat, on the 15 degree part of that angle, you can just move that across. If you've got it set exactly at the center, you can just move that across and you will automatically get clearance on that. So you don't really, you don't need to roll it. I do it just because that's the way I've done it for 30 years or 50 years, actually. Uh, but you don't need to do it if you're on exact center and you run that down. Now, if you're above the center, you do need to do it. If you're below the center, you're going to have a negative rake on there and it's not going to cut. So, when I, when I move that down, the reason I roll it a little bit is if I happen to be 10 or 15 thousandths below the center, by rolling it, I'm making sure that I put a I put a clearance on there, and, and but if you're in an exact center, you don't need to. Now, if you, and and just to reiterate, clearance that simply means that after that leading edge, and correct me if I'm wrong, that leading edge after it cuts, if you if you took that 33,000 RPM and you slowed it down to a stop and was and uh, was doing it slow motion, that leading edge, that flute would be cutting, and then that that sawdust that it's cutting has got to have a place to go. And uh, if you don't have enough clearance behind the edge, then it comes around and it cuts that piece of sawdust again. Well, and it's burning because it's, it's it, the, the heel of the, of the router bit would be burning on there, rubbing on the wood because you don't have clearance. So. Yeah, and you will see that when you look at it really close, you'll see if you see a shiny spot behind the edge and, and anything is, is shiny when you shine a light on it and it really steps up, really uh, comes out at you, uh, that means that that's, that's hitting. That's, that's hitting and you need to grind that down because the, you don't have enough clearance. Exactly. All right. Uh, quickly, Alan Moody asks, now that you're using the critter sprayer, uh, how many full coats would you use uh, would you give now compared to when you sprayed with the br or brushed it? I I like either three or four coats depending on the wood itself. Some you, woods you are more porous. You might describe that critter sprayer. Uh, well, I think a lot of guys here. already that oh, okay. regular watchers, right. but it's a little uh, siphon weird. spray gun. It's awesome. So for me, either three or four coats depending on the wood. Uh, it's so quick to do. It's so easy. So I uh, I just love that thing. But. Uh, either three or four coats. If the wood it tends to kind of soak it up like redwood, I think redwood, uh, I'll definitely be putting four coats because it tends to soak in a little bit more. But pine, it stays more on top. It doesn't soak in quite as much. Three coats would probably be enough. Okay. 
Justin Miller has a question, and it could go into a long explanation. And we don't have that. So I'm going to read the question, and I'm going to say we'll answer this question on Monday's uh, coffee and question. Okay. Okay. You, you said okay. Are we, how much? How much time? Well, we got? we've got you've got announcements to make. Yeah, I do have something else minutes. I got to talk about. So, yeah. here's the question. Yes. Um, any experience with maple? Or any tips or issues with bits or wood to look out for? That's a big question. That's what I'm um, saying. Maple, maple's a hard wood, uh, in my opinion. I don't know that I've ever cut maple. Have you? And I can't remember in 50 years. I can't remember. I may have, I may have cut maple at one time, but I can't remember ever having a carved a sign out of maple. Yeah, if uh, but I've seen some stuff done out of maple and. Uh, it makes nice signs. Uh, we've just never cut it. I, I, if I have a choice, I'm going to pick a softwood every time. And we've always had cedar or redwood or, or pine. So um, I, just, I just don't do much with hardwoods. But a lot of guys like cherry. They like maple. They like poplar. Uh, a lot of guys like kind that. of in that same uh, thing here. Patrick Harnish asks if we've ever, or you, not me, but you've ever used pallet wood to make a sign. Pallet wood? No, I haven't. Uh, you, uh, there's some guys that are doing that. Uh, it for me, it's a little bit uh, iffy because a lot of pallet woods are made out of pallets are made out of hardwoods. Again, uh, oaks or teaks or uh, pallet you know, wood mahogany or really really great signs. But generally, they're painted signs or sprayed signs rather than carved signs. So. Uh, you can make great, great signs with pallet wood, but generally they're not routed or carved signs, okay. unless you have a CNC machine, uh, in which case it wouldn't wouldn't really matter. Okay. Again, pallet wood. It generally, if you buy, get a piece of wood off a of pallet, it's rough. Um, if you if if you're gonna spray it like we do with the black, you got to sand it off. Um, I just I'm I'm not. I, a lot of guys are big into the pallet wood stuff. And they may be carving signs on out of it, but the other materials that I use are inexpensive enough that um, I'm just not going to use pallet wood. Okay. Yeah. Thank All you right. for the questions. Anybody else go answer them online. Now yeah. we've got some announcements. Okay. I, I'm doing the. Yeah. Yeah. We've only got a few minutes left. Okay. So uh, at the LTS, we always talk about the uh, the the template of the month. So the template of the month is kind of, this was uh, for what, August? Yes, month. That was August. This is September. We're doing kind of a, we've that got a happy, happy couple and now we have a happy family. So that's the happy couple last month. This is the gonna be the September, right? September, Yeah. September, right. happy family. So that's the template of the month. If you're a premium member, the next time you order, you'll get one of those in your package. Uh, that's the way it works. Now uh, that's available. Uh, it will be available for, on the uh, website. It'll be on, for we'll, non-member, uh, yeah. non-premium member. Right, and you can go on the website. Vic will it's have it on, on there by the end of the weekend. By the end of the weekend, it'll be on there. Now uh, we have a new thing, uh, and this is kind of Vicky's brainchild. So when I made that fast layout template, um, you know you can make those, and uh, we talked about the reason for those would be stock signs. Well, I made a couple stock signs here that are based on movie quotes. I don't know, here. You're gonna have to hold, yeah. Let's do that. Movie quote signs. Yeah, we'll do it that way. There you go. So you may recognize those quotes, but here's the thing. These are uh, special deals that Vicki had come up with this. And so we now have a new product line and I'm gonna lay these out. Okay. We now have a new product line where we are actually making little stencils. And we're, oh, shoot, that's, that's right. Like, I'll, I'll those going to work. So we have a whole bunch of little stencils, and there are four each of these from uh, each of these movies Withers, Wizard of Oz, and uh, from Tombstone. So those going to All right. Just lay, go ahead just lay them flat. Down. Lay them down there. Okay. Cool. So. Uh, that goes Tombstone. I know I'm moving stuff around. So we've got four quotes from Tombstone and four quotes from uh, Wizard of Oz. I like the monkeys one myself. 
Well, yeah. Vicky likes this one. <laughs> For you, not me. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is, uh, is actually going to be a new product line. We're going to expand on this, do other uh, famous quotes. Um, okay, keep it And I, I'm going to do a demo on these this next week. I'm actually going to uh, set up a couple of these, especially this one with three lines. All right. Because these are about three quarter inch letters. These are about one inch. Everything else, I think, is one inch letters. These are a Western style, obviously, and these are a. What's that style? Lemon? What? Lemon. Just have a sit. I'm trying to. Oh, you want me to sit down? Um, so, uh, we're going to expand on these and, uh, and have these available on the website. These are any of these movie quotes. These, by the way, are three and a half by 13 and a half. 13 and a half. So they fit perfectly on a little 4x14 board. That's how, uh, that's how I did this one. Just fits perfectly on there. And it lays out quick. Um, and I, you're moving way too fast. Sorry. <laughs> Put it back on there so we can... Okay. There we go. Okay. Just, as, just as, a, as, a, as an idea, whoever asked about the, uh, the palette signs, uh -huh. uh, if you had templates like these, you put them on a palette board and then you just sprayed them blue or white or black or whatever, yeah. took it off, you'd have a little sign that was done. You wouldn't have to carve it. You'd have a little sign that was done and that's a palette sign. That's uh, a good point. That's, uh, that's, and that, that's the way palette signs can be made pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Lyndon, I thought you were still camping with uh, the Cephas's. The Cephas, George and Sandy Cephas. Anyway, Hi to everybody. Hi, George. Hi, Sandy. Okay. If they're there. <laughs> uh. Don says, LOL, your wife is great. Slows you down. Yes, he goes too fast, thinks I can keep up. Um... Anyway, these are, uh, these are going to be a standard size, 3.5 by 13.5. So the, the cool thing, like, for instance, this one with the monkeys, which I really like, um, you could put that on a longer board or a wider board and then put a little flying monkey image on the end of it. You could put the, if I only had a brain with a little scarecrow on it if you or wanted to. Very... And if you, have a customer, uh -huh. if you have a customer who wants you to do something, a lot of a, a certain sign, and you want it special, uh, we're certainly capable, I have the capabilities of making special. Uh, they, it would depend on what you wanted on it as to what it would cost. But yeah. the, the capabilities are there. These ones, if you, if these stock ones that we have, that they, Vicky is shaking her head. But. Vicky has done lots, of, each one of these took her about, what, an hour to do. Yeah. Uh, so each one of these, uh, anyway, the stock ones that we have are 10 bucks a piece. That's what they'll be, whatever it is. Whichever one it is is ten bucks. If you want the one special, special font, special deal, you got to get a hold of Vicky. She'll let you know how much that is. I remember about 35, 40 years ago, there was a mobile home manufacturer who asked me to make one like these that they wanted for put on all their mobile homes. So I made one like Eric made that first one out of eighth inch uh, masonite. I made one like that, I sprayed them, and then I carved each one. But by making a template, a spray template like this, I just made it where I could just make them one right after the other. Yeah. And uh, so there's all kinds of ways you can do stuff like that as a product. And that's, that's a little to do with marketing, not so much this, but uh, yeah. it just gives you some idea of what you can do. Stock signs are a big, it could be a huge business, and I, I sold tons of them, and I made my own uh, templates like I did on that other one I made my own that was long before we had a laser that did this and uh, I sold tons of stock signs that was a big part of my income up there so um, anyway these are 10 bucks a piece they'll be on the website oh, yeah. within Hopefully a, a few days whatever um, and if you have questions on it ask Vicki uh, is that about it? I think, about it I think that's about it we'll wrap it up it looks like our signal held up huh Patrick Harnish says Vicki Eric and Dave making signs great again <laughs> making what making signs, signs great, great again, again. Oh. <laughs> I like that oh, yeah great. that's I good. like my name yeah we ought to make we ought to make a template make America great again yeah oh, we should you know Joe Trump yeah, yeah we but, should you know what that's a good idea yeah could be a whole uh, category of uh, Trump Trumpisms. Quotes. Yeah. <laughs> Trump quotes. Wrong, wrong, wrong. 
<laughs> we could have a whole Trump category. That's funny. All right, you guys. I guess that's about it. I'm so glad that our uh, that our signal held out. That is cool. All right, Danny. Yes, I will make a custom template depending on what it is, but there is a art fee on top of the uh, thing. Send me an email and we can talk about it. Thank you, Dave. There, there she, Vicky. I just found something for you to do. Yes, <laughs> I have no to do. That, That's going to be another one of them lessons I learned. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So we did good. We did it. Hey, Facebook held out. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. That's great. So uh, I will have the YouTube video hopefully on. I'll go start uploading it and editing and doing all that stuff and although we don't edit much but i'll get it all hopefully if everything goes right i'll have it on the uh youtube channel by the end of the weekend and that for those of you that watched live i really got some really because i was running this camera got some really good close-ups of dad grinding those bits you'll definitely want to go back and watch the youtube version because we can get in much closer with the uh the big camera then yeah, if you have any questions just email me yeah Good idea. <laughs> Greg Warrell says, I wish my family was as happy as you guys seem to be. <laughs> what you see here, Greg, is what you get. This is our everyday life. Uh, this is it. This is what we do. Lyndon so. Johnson said, hug your dad for me. Oh, <laughs> Lyndon. You're going to have to get over here and do it yourself, Lyndon. Okay. All right. All we're, right. So we, are, we are good. We're done. So thanks, everybody. Um, Monday morning. Um, I'll be uh, answer more questions. I may take a bunch of these questions that you guys and uh, on, on Facebook all the comments and all that stuff There's hundreds of them. So I promise or I apologize if I don't get to all of them if, if there, I don't answer your question on Facebook or soon Email it to me. Remember don't Facebook message me email me Eric at makewoodsign.com That's where I I answer all the questions. So um, you're rambling yeah, I am, yeah, but I'm trying, right. to, I'm trying it's to hammer right. that, that thing home. All I right, hate everybody. missing, missing I questions. All right, you guys, thanks again. Hope everybody has a great weekend, and we'll see you guys on Monday morning. All right. All right? All right, Good bye. Jo Good job, Vic. <laughs> thanks. Bye. 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 All right, so we're so done on awesome. Facebook. Now we're done.